Today's camera, Retina 3C, that's Retina 3 big C, uppercase C. This camera looks nice and tidy, but it's got problems. And it's number one problem, well it's got lots of problems and they all stem mostly from the same source. And this one went for a swim, it was dropped in a river I believe. So I'm just going to check it over and see exactly what's good and exactly what's bad with this one. Try the film advance. That definitely moves. Nothing particularly notable there. Shutter didn't do anything. The shutter release pushed down which meant that the shutter had been cocked but it didn't actually fire. Absolutely no life out of the shutter at all. Another thing I notice here is the lens has a spot, a visible spot in the middle. Clipped in, let's have a look, I'll remove that filter. And the spot here is actually visible on that filter and on the lens. So what that tells me is that a droplet of water has sat between those very close, where are those pieces of glass there, they must be very close. There must be a tiny air space there because I haven't noticed the filter coming close enough to touch the lens at any stage with any of these cameras. But the gap was small enough that it was able to suspend a drop of water and that's left a mark on the inside of the filter and the front surface of the lens, out front element. So hopefully that will clean away. We'll have to wait and see. What else can we tell? The focus is quite smooth but it's quite stiff. Now that would be a common fault of course regardless of the history of the camera just because it's so old. I'm just going to check this and see if the rangefinder is working. The rangefinder is wrapped right out at the close focus end of its scale. It doesn't return back to the infinity position. But the rangefinder image looks reasonably good. So I can be, I think that'll probably clean up. Inside the back of the camera can we see anything? A couple of fingerprints on the pressure plate. I'm guilty of doing that myself. Um, it all looks clean and tidy in here. This camera was dropped in the river probably about four or five months ago. The owner did try it out and it looks like he did a reasonably good job but it, he didn't ship it to me just straight away so there could be problems that might have been an easy fix, might be a hard fix. I'm looking at the rear surface of that lens just letting it catch the light and I can see marks on the coating um, they may or may not clean off I can see marks on the inside of the rear lens group. I'm looking now at the diaphragm, the aperture settings, and I'm just going to check that and see if it opens and closes. Oh, it does. It's very stiff. So the aperture is very stiff. Um, could be corrosion. It could just be that the camera needed to be serviced anyway, and that was covered in oil. We'll have to find out. So it should be an interesting job. Does the meter function? And the meter does function but it looks very low in output. It's quite possible that the selenium cells effectively being killed because selenium cells do not like moisture getting to them. Uh, it just buggers them up. So although the meter works, so it's got a good movement, uh, I'll have to check that and see if it's got the appropriate sensitivity. Otherwise, we'll, I'll probably have to find another selenium cell. It's extremely difficult finding a cell 
that is also not worn out at this late stage. So I'll pull this camera down and I'll report the problems that I find as I go and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this all returned back to a proper functioning camera for the owner and all shall be good. Now you might be able to see here that we've got corrosion on the rangefinder. The nickel plated components of the camera seem to have stood up quite well. No obvious sign of corrosion on the parts that I've seen so far. Um, but components that were not nickel plated, like here, screws and brackets on the rangefinder, they've all rusted away. They're not terrible, but all that rust will have to be cleaned off. Where there are dissimilar metals in close contact, certainly we've got a few rust problems here. The return spring for the rangefinder, that certainly looks a bit rusty at the end there. That'll need to be carefully cleaned. All of these screws will have to come out and be cleaned. So there was certainly moisture retained between the rangefinder and the camera body and more probably moisture was retained between the top of the rangefinder and the inside of the top cover and that's caused the corrosion there between the close metal surfaces the similar metal surfaces and the moisture is enough to create some corrosion and here you might see a little spot of corrosion on the back that is where the screw head was in very close contact with the top cover. So there's some very minor marks on the inside of that top cover. That's chrome plated of course. Um, even if it's not fully chrome plated on the inside, there'll be nickel there. That'll all, those marks should clean right off. So far so good. The screw heads from the rangefinder marginally corroded, they mark, they mark, they will clean off. And here I've got the rewind shaft. And that should just push out, but it doesn't want to push out. So I can see that the inner and outer, excuse me. Alright, I'm back. Let's have a look, look at this. That is def most definitely not moving. The inner and the outer shaft here are completely bound together. Now, I'll try a bit of solvent down there, see if that'll loosen it up. Hopefully a couple of drops of solvent will help. And I'll screw the rewind knob back on so I've got something to grip it by. Using a screwdriver here underneath there, they freed up. That's good. That was not looking good there for a second. Now pop those components apart and have a closer look. I can quite clearly see here corrosion at this point. Now there's a small spring here, a ring, which drops into a groove and well, it just provides some pressure against the inside of this tube. Just a bit of friction, controlled friction. And I can see that that's quite rusty. And there's rust on this shaft too. It's quite obvious. So I expect I can clean up this outer. I don't think that should be a problem. Um, I should be able to get that nice and clean and smooth and working correctly. This piece here, I'll have a go with some metal polish. Make, see if it will clean up. Uh, Otherwise, I'll replace it with one from my spares. 
So it didn't take long to dig into the camera and find that little nuisance. So I will carry on and see what other clever things are awaiting me in here. Could be all sorts. Alright, I'll carry on uh, taking this camera apart, seeing what I could discover. These components on the top of the film advance mechanism look alright. I'm sure they will benefit from a service, but they would have benefited from a service regardless because I have no idea of the service history of this particular camera. For all I know, it has never been serviced. Just remove the circlip and uh, spring from the lock lever. That's the end of film lock lever. Its uh, job is to stop the film advance from moving when you reach the end of the film. Uh, the way the counter is organised, it's normally held downwards against its return spring. Um, when the counter frame and the top of the camera revolves round to frame number one. It exposes a small hole, which is allows this post to rise. And as that post rises, it traps the film advance and prevents you from being able to wind on again. Well, I'll open up the base of the camera next. Okay, let me remove the leatherette patch from the base of the film advance lever. It's very well stuck down and uh, time will tell whether that's been disturbed or not previously. I'm not accustomed to the original adhesive being that good or that uh, tenacious. So I suspect that this has been removed and reapply it at some stage and as I often say somebody has chosen to use an unsuitable adhesive of course that's quite a uh, cruel thing to say because the adhesive concerned may have been known to work very well at the time but with 20 or 30 years of Time has passed since it was put on there, the composition may well have changed. It feels like it's got an unreasonably good grip on that leatherette, and I don't want to rip that patch up. Have a peek under there. Yeah, it is something other than the original adhesive. I can see remains of the original adhesive, but this stuff is something else again. Quite sticky. Certainly didn't want to come off. If people have been over generous when applying adhesive to things like that leatherette patch, um, effectively applying the leatherette patch covered in a large amount of liquid adhesive, then it, the adhesive is very good at oozing down past the heads of screws and things and uh, locking things up.
this is the back catch release cover it has two fine chromed brass screws if particularly if the screws are slightly loose if they've backed out at all and the heads are sticking up proud they're prone to damage from the camera having been popped down on something hard so it's not uncommon to find those screws are damaged if they're damaged they can be what typically happens is the screw slot folds over so that you can't get your screwdriver into there easily yeah, I'm interested in this leatherette on the base plate Leatherettes on these chrome plated brass base plates are typically easier to remove than leatherettes on the alloy body itself and so with the trim, the chrome trim goes around the outside here so there's a patch in the middle where the aluminium body comes through the adhesive is often stuck far better to that aluminium body part than it is to the chrome trim around the outside I can see remains of adhesive around the edge of the leatherette there um, which tells me that that's not original it means someone has been in this far once before in the history of the camera most typically that would be because there was some problem with the film advance mechanism um, it's much less common when the cameras were comparatively new to delve deeper into it we have to remove the strut the uh, bellows cover all of those components so you wouldn't normally have to go in any deeper it's always best policy to remove the leatherette completely if if practical rather than just peel it back as far as you need to to access screws uh, if you remove the leatherette entirely clean up behind it and put fresh adhesive on there stick it down nicely it'll go down smooth you'll end up with a, a good smooth application of the leatherette if on the other hand you just fold it back uh, as far as you need to uh, you'll find you almost always end up with a line across at that point where that where you re-glued it from and uh, if you know it's there it's always annoying it's unsightly if you don't know it's there a lot of people of course would never see it back catch just twitched a bit when I touched it with a scalpel blade I don't know whether that means it's slightly loose Here yeah, you can probably hear me sliding that scalpel blade back down against the aluminium casting, getting it all of the leatherette off and its adhesive probably. I don't want the blade to uh, cut the leatherette if at all possible. The leatherette's quite well stuck and it's in quite good condition. The leatherette's not always in good condition. Typically, if it's going to go bad, it gets brittle and uh, it's a plastic impregnated woven material. And if it gets brittle, it'll just snap off. 
I can certainly see the mess of glue on the base plate there now. So it's quite obvious that that base plate has been off and re-glued at some stage. Right, I'll remove all those screws. Well, you might be able to hear the wind howling out here today. It's Our summer, unfortunately, has gone. And uh, it sounds like winter has arrived. trim will have to go through the ultrasonic cleaner I want to get some of that muck off there now here I'm just checking the lock lever to see if there's any corrosion on it at all and there isn't it looks clean this is the release lever this releases the film advance when you release the shutter so that you can wind on for the next shot Again, I'm checking for corrosion, and these nickel-plated components look good. I'm checking this steel spring. That looks okay. It's quite common with any of these retinas for the screws holding the tripod socket to the casting to be loose. In this case, they're tight. But I'm going to remove that tripod socket and put it through the cleaner regardless and of course they'll all be tightened down firmly afterwards I'll remove the hinge pin screws for the folding front door That one's a bit reluctant, the slot in the top of that screw a little bit shallow, I didn't want to admit the screwdriver. Alright, normally there are spacers or shim washers on these doors at the hinge pins, typically top and bottom. Not uncommonly one of them will be a thicker shim than the other. It's not hard to work out which goes where when you go to reassemble the camera checking that I got those ones. There's a spring in here to help return the shutter release. That is not present on all of the cameras. Sometimes it was present originally but was lost during a service. At other times it was just never there. Uh, the arrangement for returning the shutter release changed quite a bit over time with the Retina 3C models. I need a tool to remove the button from the bottom of the sprocket shaft and then I'll remove these other film advance components from the body. Just looking closely at the spring that came off there and the washer and they both look good to me just release the spring from the back catch lock no not back catch lock the rewind button lock again I'm checking that spring and it's screw they look fine the rewind button lock lever looks fine a single screw holds the sprocket shaft or 
the single screw drives the sprocket shaft. Would be a fairer way to state that. The shaft is a sprocket, of course, is trapped in there as long as the shaft's in place. Grease there is thick, feels a bit dry. The clutch, the clutch's job is to provide some slippage or allow for slippage on the take up sprock, uh, spool so that as the film builds up on the spool, as the film passes through the camera. Um, if you made no allowance for slippage there you would end up with torn out sprocket holes because the film sprocket the drive for that is absolutely fixed there has to be allowance for some slippage between those components three screws down here hold my film advanced lit shaft in place and unusually, they are firm. It's not uncommon for them to be loose. Various problems can spring from those screws being loose. One of the things that can happen is it allows the shaft to move up and down in the camera slightly. And the effect of that is that the point at which the release lever drops into position on the cam will shift up or down relative to that cam and so you'll find problems like the, you'll release the shutter but the film advance is not released to allow you to wind on for the next shot You can also get those sorts of problems. There's a few film chips in there underneath the sprocket. That's not at all uncommon. You can also have problems if the release lever is damaged in some fashion. Typically that would be as if someone had uh, pressed extremely hard on the shutter release or dropped the camera so that it hit its it had went down head first and the shutter release hit the bench or the ground first that may bend that lever and if it bent that lever then it wouldn't be moving in the right position relative to the other components right so I need to remove the shutter next another tool